Let's talk about poke, Phytolacca americana, because this is one of those plants that you see every spring on every social media group, it's every plant ID group, every single day somebody posts without scrolling up and seeing it, somebody posted it the day before. Has anybody any idea what this plant is? And it's always because when it comes out to berry, it looks very cool. It's a very unique looking plant and the berry cluster is, is really nice and unique looking. Very red, kind of dark red berries. Uh, and so these aren't in berry yet, but we have poke here. I planted a poke in this yard uh, probably eight years ago, seven years ago, and now it's probably about eight or nine feet tall. And there's tons of little poke babies around the yard. So this is one of them. And you know, just growing out, has never never taken any care of it or anything like that. It's just growing on its own. Uh, there's some little ones that are coming up here around the area as well. These would actually be, you could use as food. You could take them, you could uh, uh, leach them, and then use them as what's you know it's commonly in the southeast in the Appalachian is, is, is referred to as poke salad and you could you could eat them then but they're medium toxicity herb uh, maybe even high toxicity herb as they start to get older here you have to be kind of careful about it the root of this plant is what's normally used as medicine we used to talk about poke root and it is primarily a, a lymph for an a lymph mover and an immune stimulator and it's very good at that uh, there are there's uh, some different uh, research going on into its ability to be a, an anti possibly an anti-cancer uh, you know some constituents that might be anti-cancer but it's primarily uh, uh, for the purposes of herbalism it's primarily one of those herbs that's really a good immune stimulator and a lymph mover and so we have to be careful though how much we use of it if so one of the first side effects of using too much of it is going to be nausea and vomiting so if you're using too much you know it's very it's, you're gonna you're gonna know pretty quickly uh, I would never use this herb just by itself when I harvest it and, and work with the root even just working with it without gloves or not paying attention to it and working with the root for a while for even just a few hours and I start to feel really kind of you know I feel bad I feel nauseous I'll feel sick to my stomach uh, it's and, and get a headache a little bit as well uh, so the so it's very powerful uh, normally what I do is I'll take the root and uh, these, these plants will have you know depending on how long they've been growing will have a huge root and you can take the root and then slice it you know lengthwise like we would normally do and dry it first before I make medicine of it I don't ever make fresh poke root uh, tincture per se. Uh, not saying you couldn't do that, but I prefer to dry it first. And even dried, it's still very, very effective and very, very, you know, again, medium to high toxicity. So I always use this in a formula. And I usually you balance it with other herb and lymph, lymph and immune movers and, and immune modulators that are that are usually um, more gentle as well. So it goes well in a formula with that. Um, it's been used traditionally for everything from uh, lymph, and, uh, lymph um, uh, swelling and uh, uh, you know mastitis in the breast, uh, you know topically as an oil, uh, or all the way to you know classically used for something that's just uh, kind of that pre. You're starting to feel like you're getting sick, or you have lymph node swelling, or you need to move your lymph for, for after an injury or trauma to to an area where there's a lot of inflammation. We need to move lymph. Now the other part of the plant that I that I, I think you can use very well is is the leaf. The leaf is not as uh, potent as the root and it works very well if you dry this and use it as a wound uh, use it on wounds uh, it's similar in my opinion to echinacea in its ability to move and stimulate the lymph the local uh, lymph and white blood cell activity in the area and I think that's why it makes such a good wound healer uh, so this is another possibility for it the berry uh, you can you know what I'll do generally when they're in berry is I will come out and um, you know just grab a berry and and kind of uh, break the berry open and chew on it a little bit, suck out the juice of the berry and the flesh, and then spit out the seed, and just like one berry, and that's and and, and of course the berries are considered to be toxic if you eat them that way, uh, you know. So don't do that with a whole bunch of berries. It is toxic. It will definitely make you sick and ill if you do that with a, if you eat a bunch of berries that way. But one berry, and I get that little that little rush, that little kind of. Uh, uh, so, you know, speeding up of the, you can feel it, just a little bit of a, of a flush, you know, but your, your, um, uh, it inc increases vascularity in my opinion, and, and you feel that lymph movement. Poke literally is one of those that you can take if you have swollen, uh, you know, so, submandibular lymph glands, take that and you get, you can literally feel things start to move. Um, so again, and this this is something you can use also uh, if you have uh, inguinal lymph swelling, maybe from a urinary tract inf infection, uh, herpes simplex infections, those kinds of things where you get any kind of lymph swelling any, anywhere around the body. Um, this one's been chewed up a little bit. It looks like I'm not sure what it is that we've got we're, uh, chewing on it, but generally the leaves look very much uh, more of an arrow-shaped type of leaf like this, a pointed leaf, and it's got that classic kind of red 
looking stalk there. You see, actually, it's kind of interesting. There's a cleavers plant growing right next to it. We'll talk about that next. So cleavers is another one of our lymph movers, but it's a very gentle one. So it's funny that these two are growing together because I would certainly work with these two together as medicine. One is very gentle and one is very, very strong. As long as we're here talking about poke, you probably saw the poke video. Uh, if you haven't, checked that out. Um, I noticed that there's a cleavers plant growing literally right up the side of the poke here. So this is cleavers, Gallium aparini. Uh, there are several different species of this, but they're all probably, as far as I know, medicinally analogous. The leaf pattern is what we would call a whorled leaf pattern, where we have, from a single node, we have several leaves, more than two, coming out from that node as opposed to if it were just two, we would call it opposite. And if it were just one, we would call it alternate. But this is a whorled leaf pattern. This is uh, another one of those herbs that we use for lymph and immune movement and, and very gentle and mild lymph movement. It's what I would use, uh, you know, it's very safe to use. It's actually an edible. One thing that we do with this is we will take the leaves and, um, and uh, uh, pull the leaves off of the stem itself and then use the stem as food. You can take the stem and you can cut it into one to two inch sections and freeze it and then you could use it as sort of a, a gluten-free kind of noodle that you can either fry. It works best to fry it but you could boil it just like you would boil you know noodles for anything. Uh, very similar. Okay. Uh, this is a um, this is a plant that the, the leaves of which we use is a plant that uh, is used oftentimes for urinary tract uh, infections, for just mild lymph swelling. Uh, it's not strong enough by any means, in my opinion, to use by itself and expect a lot of a lot of uh, effect from it. But it works very well in conjunction with other herbs. And again, I mentioned poke and how strong that is, and how it's a medium to high toxicity herb. Uh, um, this is, you know, cleavers is like on the other end of the spectrum. It's a very low toxicity herb, but it's also a very, I would call it a low potency herb. Uh, not that it's not effective, it certainly works, but it's one that you want to put into balance other herbs that you're using for lymph movement, for immune stimulation, and uh, and also of course you can use it as, as what we call an aquaretic, or some would say a diuretic, but really it's an aquaretic uh, in, that, in, in the sense that no herbs are really actually true diuretics. But it'll increase the, the blood flow through the kidney, which means it's going to increase uh, the amount of, of uh, urination and, and urine excretion, which is very useful for instance in something like a like a urinary tract infection where we just have to have more flow. or or if we're using it in conjunction with other herbs, maybe for something like uh, kidney stones, where we're trying to get rid of the kidney stones. So, you know, if they're small enough to do that with, it would work well for that too. Uh, so it works okay in even your cold and flu type, you know, uh, um, formulas where you're just trying to, you know, you're trying to, prior to getting sick, where a person's just starting to feel like they're getting something, it works well in a formula for something like that as well. Now, cleavers is a lot, has a lot of water content to it. I normally dry it before I tincture it, but you could tincture it fresh. But when we scrape off the leaves, and use the stems the way I was talking about them. The leaves we just go ahead and lay out and dry. And we'll do, we can do a short video on how to dry herbs. In fact, I think we'll do a demonstration on that. But we want to just be able to, to dry them first and then we're gonna get a better, either a tea or a tincture. And if we're gonna tincture it, I usually tincture in about 30% alcohol with the dry leaf itself. Uh, or or anything or, or a decoction or however we want to work with a glyceride. It works well in all of those different types of, of extractions.